So this is Nikki Fotheringham. She writes um, Green Moxie. And I think that's all the introduction she needs. It's a standalone, it's a wonderful blog. I would love to get links on it. She's never let me yet. The internet and mobile technologies are reducing the meaningfulness of their interactions we have with each other. How many times have you gone to a restaurant and seen a couple sitting there, both on their phones? Five texts, two tweets about the new show of the day is not the same as sitting down for a great conversation for a half an hour with a trusted friend. As humans, we need these interactions. We need to tell our stories, and we need to hear other people's stories too. Why? Why do we need stories? Aside from the connections it forges between us, stories are what weaves the very fabric of our lives. <coughs> stories are so central to what we are as human beings, that they're even important for our health. One study found that a 20-minute conversation with a friend has the same benefits as an hour-long nap. Another one uh, found that medical students who had study buddy experienced half of the stress levels that those uh, students experienced who didn't. A study of 4,700 elderly adults in, in Alameda, California showed that people who liked to eat out, go to movies, and take part in social activities lived an average of two and a half years longer than their more homely counterparts. While the number of meaningful con uh, connections diminishes our desire, uh, our desire to tell stories and hear stories of others hasn't disappeared. It's just moved to that place where we spend all our time, the internet. And this phenomenon is changing the face of our marketing. Your clients aren't interested in your corporate brand, but they are interested in your story. When you're formulating your marketing strategy, you need to focus on the story your brand is telling. Every Facebook status, every tweet, and every newsletter is a chapter in your brand story. Your brand story is important because stories are the vehicles that turn information into meaning. Your brand story transforms your company from a faceless corporation into a cast of characters who have dreams, goals, and desires. Stories provide your customers with context and give your actions purpose. When you tell your brand story through your website and social media interactions, you form real, lasting connections with your customers. Your customers will gladly spend time with you, but they'll only spend seconds with your product description. Stories are more likely to be shared on social networks as well, and by word of mouth. People are going to tweet things that they find ins inspirational or interesting. They're going to share them on their social networks, but they're not going to share your product descriptions. <laughs> Let's take a look at Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams. Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams are selling sweet potatoes with torched marshmallows for $12 a pint. Now, I feel like if you're going to sell an ice cream that features a vegetable, you've already got a hard sell. But at $12 a pint, it's almost impossible. So what Jenny's did is they made a video. And in this video, they show how they hand roast potatoes. They peel them, mash them, they make their own marshmallows, and then they individually torch each marshmallow by hand. Once you know that, suddenly $12 doesn't seem like such a lot. You've learned how they make their own marshmallows. They show you how the ice cream is made, who makes their ice cream, and you know all of the ice cream story, so that by the end, you're willing to pay just to have a taste of it. It looks delicious. 
Our yearning for stories and personal connections permeates everything we do, especially where we choose to spend our money. As consumers, we get bombarded with more advertising every day, and it's the company that provides a rich context that really stands out. The most important asset your business has is you. Putting yourself at the, at the forefront of your marketing will give your story a much needed protagonist. Take a look at this post by um, Saddle Black Leather. The owner of Saddle Black Leather is Dave. He is the protagonist of his brand story. He shares snippets of his personal life as part of his narrative, and he takes, makes real connections to people who purchase his, his bags. The response is overwhelming. People take his bags everywhere, and when they do, they take pictures of it. They share the pictures of his bags on his Facebook. They take pictures of the bags wherever they travel in the world, and they send them in. These posts generate more shares and likes than you can shake a chopstick at. This is a really good example of a social media site really forming a very strong part of a brand narrative. Every post, tweet, and blog is a chapter in your brand story. That means they have to form a cohesive narrative. Whether produced by different people or by one writer, they must all move the story along in some small way. I know you may feel like a Vine video or an Instagram post or a tweet isn't enough space to convey a cohesive thought, but you'll be surprised at how much you can do in just 140 characters. Take a look at these examples. These examples come from a very interesting website. It's called One Sentence. Dot org, and it challenges people to use tweets to create an entire scene. It's a writer's um, blog. So here you can see three examples where just one sentence can create an entire mood. Social media does matter, and it can contribute significantly to the story of your brand. Always be remarkable. Before you post anything, Ask yourself, is this remarkable? It's the tallest flower that gets plucked first. Making your product remarkable and allowing it to stand out through unique posts is what turns your customers into raving fans. Let's take this example. This is a girl called Deborah Sterling. Deborah Sterling is an engineering graduate from Stanford University. She was one of only two girls in her class. When her sister had a little girl, she decided to go down the toy aisle and buy some gifts. She calls it the pink aisle. And while she was walking down this pink aisle, she discovered that there are no engineering to uh, toys specifically for girls. She decided she wanted to change that. So she consulted a few experts who told her she was crazy. You can't do that. You can't compete with Lego and Lincoln blocks, and you can't compete with nature. Everybody knows. Little boys like building blocks, not little girls. Well, Deborah disagreed with that, and she did some research. And what she found was that little girls did like building blocks, but they wanted a story. So she created pink building blocks, and they come with little characters and a story. So you have to build the tower before the princess can live in it, or you have to build the market before the family can go shopping. She took the same approach when it came to marketing. She said, I don't want to be a brand. I'm a person. I have a mission. And so she made a little video in which she discussed the fact that she wanted these building blocks to change the way the people thought about what little girls were capable of. So now she became a, a, a person who was writing a social blog, and her video went viral. And last year, after only eight months in business, Goldie Blocks won the prize as um, the best new shop on Shopify for 2012. E-commerce 
is essentially based on trust. All commerce is essentially based on trust. Your customers need to trust you enough, to trust your product enough to hand over their cash. One way to earn trust is to give first. After all, sharing is caring. So along with my good friend David Shepard, I run this green living blog called greenmoxie.com. It's been um, around for about 18 months, but in the first year, it was ranked on the first page of Google for Green Living Blog. And we've been going along quite nicely, but a few months ago, I decided to do something really remarkable with my own advertising campaign. So I declared on all my social networks that I was no longer spending money on advertising. Instead, I would spend my monthly advertising budget on my readers. So the first month, we ran a campaign called Token of Appreciation. Here, we attached subway tokens to our business cards and then handed them out to our readers. We did this both to encourage commuters to take a more eco-friendly mode of transport and to show people appreciation for the tremendous support we had enjoyed. In our second month, we put tops of cyborg chalk in parks across Canada. We asked our readers to send in pictures of their artwork. The response to both these campaigns has been overwhelming. Traffic to our website has increased by 18%, and our Facebook likes have almost doubled. These random acts of kindness have even earned us a love bot, which is here in the distillery. It's in Trinity Square, outside building number nine, if you'd like to go and see it. So as a writer, my advice would be, when you're forming your content marketing strategy, you need to understand how each platform that you post on contributes to your brand narrative. And, and think of it consciously before you do it, not in retrospect. If you're going to ask a number of disparate people to post on disparate places, ensure that they have a cohesive brand narrative that they share. In the words of everybody's favorite ad man, Don Draper, mm -hmm. you are the product. You feeling something, that's what sells. They want the brand, the logos, and all that stuff to come first. And I think there, were, uh, there one marketing solution will not, uh, you know, be, be the right for every business. But if you have a small to medium business, I think making real meaningful connections to your clients is a good start. Second one is to make it personal, and that's that you need a protagonist, or more. You need you can have more than one protagonist for your narrative. So that means we want to see characters in your post, especially on social media. Third one was use social media to tell your story. So instead of just using Twitter and Facebook and your other places to uh, you know post 
links to your blog or pictures, use them. The fourth one was to be remarkable. Probably the hardest. <laughs> and the fifth one uh, is that giving is the best way to receive. And I know that we, we gave, uh, like the green marks examples are quite extreme. But even if you did things like discounts, coupons, you know, free pins, those sorts of things are always good to get. Anybody else? So now you said you're, you're using it to sell products or you're actually sort of endorsing things on your site, and how is that just going after, you know, sharing information with people? Is that sort of the end result of your, one of your objectives? Yeah, so one of the questions. Okay, so she, she wanted to know that do we sell things on our side or endorse things, endorse things on our side? How do we make money off the side? So because the site is still very new um, and we focus on content and that is one of our missions in the site, uh, we do still have, you can see this, this top lock here is, um, we just, just opened our Green Moxie store. Um, it doesn't have that many products in, but we're starting to stock up with different things and it's a combination of things that we actually stock and companies that we endorse in. Do you write all the content? Uh, no, I, I write probably about 97% of the content. <laughs> and I have guest writers too. 